Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am chatting with Morgan Doman, and we are talking all about avoiding burnout, cycle syncing, just mompreneur life in general. So Morgan, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm thank so excited you. to be here. Thank you for being a part of this. I truly appreciate that. So before we dive into this conversation today, tell us more about yourself, who you are and what you do. So I am a life and business coach and I um, I specialize in two things. I have one side is where I specialize uh, helping women, but usually they're mompreneurs, uh, get their businesses started and thriving. And then I also help mothers avoid burnout, you know, and really take control of uh, their own energy and understand cycle tracking as well, because that actually has a huge um, impact on our ability to avoid burnout. So that's what I do. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. So for those who are not familiar, tell us more about like cycle tracking and how that can impact, like how you're feeling and, and how that's even a beneficial thing for you. Yeah. So cycle tracking is about really tracking where we are in our menstrual cycle. Um, it's usually about 28 days long. That's the average, but it's not necessarily um, where everyone's at. You know, some women are like 24, some women are 30. And of course, I'm talking about a woman who's not on hormonal birth control, right? Or um, not postmenopausal as well. However, you know, cycle tracking is really important for pretty much everyone because our hormones are always fluctuating. And so um, to kind of give like a really brief intro to cycle tracking, uh, it's really about understanding the infradian rhythm and that's our 28 day long rhythm. And um, what we'll find, for example, is like when we're ovulating, um, during that time, we actually have more testosterone in our body. And so that's a great time to like, go do stuff, you know, go out on a date with your husband and, and all of that great stuff, because we have more of that risk, you know, energy, you know, that risk hormone. Uh, and so it gives us that energy to go take risks, put ourselves out there. Like I always like to recommend to anyone who's like scared of networking, go at that time. Um, and then, uh, you know, but when we're menstruating, for example, our hormones are really, really low, you know, and so a lot of us need way more rest than we're giving ourselves. And so what I love to do is just start to give permission to start to just track it and see how you're feeling at each stage. And what's really cool is for women who are no longer menstruating, um, we can actually see a correlation between our hormones and the moon, the moon phases. So you can actually get into that and kind of have fun with that as well. Which huh, that's so cool. So it, tracking more so like the moon cycle, would that help those women on like the hormonal birth controls too? Or absolutely. is that strictly just for the, the post? No, no, that's actually, absolutely. That is totally a great w place to start because we are really, you know, we are nature, right? And mm -hmm. so we are affected by nature. And so as women to start to really get into communication with the moon cycles, you'll actually see it's going to give you a little bit of a warning of like, oh, like for example, on the full moon, there's like so much energy usually in the air. Yeah. Um, liter like they literally say more babies are born during mm -hmm. that time. And so, um, you know, during that time, you may find a, like a lot of emotions are coming up. That's totally normal, but it's nice to start having those benchmarks. Cause when we start to understand what's coming, we can actually plan a little bit more. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's great advice because, you know, coming from a career in healthcare, like it is true. If you think that the full moon does not impact things, oh yes, <laughs> if, you will see it all on a full moon. <laughs> so that is so interesting though, that you tie that together. Cause I, I wonder too, I'm like thinking to myself, well, what about these moms who, who aren't menstruating on a, a monthly basis? Like how do they do this? So that's really interesting that we can tie this in to that as well. Yes. So cool. 
And two, you know, like you said, you know, give yourself permission to start tracking it and see how you feel. So besides just tracking our cycle, are there other aspects that we should be tracking with it? Or is it just a matter of just writing down like, okay, this, you know, this is the day I started and how do we do that? Yeah, I, I, I kind of like the old school, just writing down. Um, you can also get now most, um, most planners have like the phases of the moon actually. So you can even like get a planner with that and then just write next to it. This is how I feel today and start to see if there's a correlation anywhere. Um, that's really what I recommend. And also to, um, add, this is like very practical, but add the moon phases to like your Google calendars. You can just like Google search, add phases to Google calendars, and then you can start to see how you feel. And for those of you who are not ovulating or menstruating anymore, I really recommend you start to also pay attention to the new moon. Cause that's when you're going to get that energy of like, let's go out there, let's go do something new and, and like have that moment of, um, putting yourself out there, you know? Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. And it's so simple, you know? We, so we, simple, yes. As moms, we tend to overcomplicate everything, but yeah. this is just so simple and it can make, like you said, such a big impact because, yeah, it makes sense. Like, okay, like when your testosterone levels are going up, yeah, you're going to have more of that go, 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 that masculine energy yes. versus when you're you're just, needing rest and pushing through that's where a lot of the burnout can happen too because you're overextending yourself right yes totally and i think too it's it's important to remember right men are on the 24 hour circadian rhythm and so are we but we have another rhythm and that rhythm really requires a time to go 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 and a time to chill and rest maybe take a bubble bath and that's really what i think you know, we're starting to uh, reawaken in women is this idea that like, you know what, we don't have to be the same exact thing every single day. We can have fluctuations in our energy and just honor that. Yeah. And being aware of, okay, most likely you're going to have more energy here, less energy here. That lets you plan a little bit better with life too. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I absolutely love it. So simple. What other tips have you found as a mom, as a business owner, what's helped you avoid that cycle of burnout? Um, I really love really habits are a great place to start habits, either in the morning or the evening for, for yourselves, you know, um, something that just brings us back to ourselves. For example, like one of my clients every evening, she puts the kids to bed and then she lights a candle and has her tea and just kind of like takes a moment to sense, you know, how like do some prayers. Yeah. And that's just her way of every day coming back to ourselves and creating a habit around herself and what makes her feel just a little bit inspired, you know? And yeah. for some of you, it may be right before your kids get up. That's also fine. You know, for everyone, it's a little different. Maybe it's when they're napping in the afternoon, but whatever it is, it's really about just finding a moment two to five minutes every day that you can just come back to yourself. And what I find that happens during that time is we really start to say, Hey, you know, I need to pull back here. Let me, let me give myself permission to pull back. Or I really want to go for this. I'm going to do it. Instead of when we have some silence every day, I think we're able to manage all the demands that are on us. Yeah. And, um, and, and I think that's really important for mothers to have a moment of just solitude and quiet, and, um, it can really just have a massive impact. It can. And it's hard at first to yeah. commit to that. But like you said, when you make it a habit, it yes. is easier Then you don't have to be like, oh my gosh, where am I going to schedule time to, you know, take, you know, all this time out of my day to go to a spa to get a massage or, you know, we think everything has to be these grand things. Well, no, yes. just, just taking two to five minutes, just sitting down with your tea and reflecting in prayer. That's a beautiful thing. But so often we're like, oh, we'll just, you know, flip through the phone, scroll through Instagram, you know, all these things that are happening around us that it can almost be a little uncomfortable to sit in the quiet, you know, it really, really mom, can. yeah, we're navigating everything constantly and it's hard to shut our minds off, but that's yes. essential. So, so important. Um, 
Yeah, I, I I can't agree with you more on that. That it's just about it can it can feel uncomfortable, but also, you know, we're we are in a when we're constantly stressed, you know, we we have to actually break that habit. And that's what we're really doing when we have a daily practice for ourselves is we're breaking the habit of always being stressed. Yeah. And there's, you know, I understand it's like, there's so much coming at us. Right. But at the same time, um, we want to try and, you know, calm our central nervous system, our stress response, um, so that we can have a more happier, fulfilled life. And also, you know, there's a lot of science now indicating that children, um, get, have their ability to relax from their mothers. So this is really not just about you. It's really going to impact your whole family, not to make anyone feel guilty. (laughs) It's not about that. It's just about moving forward. You can say to yourself, you know what, this isn't just about me. This is actually about also helping my kids, you know, find their own calm. I love that. The habit of being stressed because it is just as much as we think that we have to be running around like chickens with our heads cut off all day long, it's there's no trophy. There's no yeah. prize for being the most stressed out mom. So <laughs> if we can break that habit, I mean, yeah, the modeling yeah. that we'll be able to do for our kids, because they're always watching, even when they pretend like they're not, they're, they're always watching. And then they pick up on like the bad habits that you don't want them to pick up on. And <laughs> yeah. You know, all those fun yeah. things as mom <laughs> that uh, we've all been there. <laughs> oh my goodness. What other tips can you give us for avoiding burnout? How do people uh, identify when they're getting burned out? Let's start yeah. with that. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, I think for for me, one of the things I really like to recommend is you start to know you're burnt out when you're waking up already stressed out. That's kind of a big one. Um, you know, sometimes we sleep badly and we wake up stressed out, but if it's a chronic thing where like you're waking up constantly stressed out, I really think that is a great sign that burnout is coming. Um, the second one is like, you just don't have the patience you used to have, you know, like your kids are always annoying you kind of thing. (laughs) That can be a really, really big one as well. Um, and what I, I like to recommend too, is if, you think you're burning out, you're probably burning out, you know, yeah, like, yeah. no one thinks they're burning out unless they actually are. So if you even yeah. have a suspicion of that, um, and also if you find yourself getting stressed out at things that like you normally wouldn't, you know, like if things are be- getting blown out of proportion a lot, um, that can also be a sign that your, your stress response is, is kind of out of whack. And, and usually when I see if someone's stressed out a lot, that usually indicates burnout is coming, you know, the two and two tend to have, um, kind of the, uh, the, tend to be related a little bit. And also just, do you have a lot going on? Are you on the go all day, every day? You know, again, when we look at our infradian rhythm, you know, we're not meant to be on the go every single day at a hundred percent. And I think when we have those expectations, it it just, it, it gets us into a little bit of trouble there. Oh, definitely. And I love that you touched upon that because my expectations of motherhood before I became a mom and then now like expectation versus reality, two totally different yes, things. Like, yes, right. Hugely different, but getting that awareness of what is going on that's where you can make the change so i love Mm -hmm. that you said like the fact that you're wondering am i burnt out yeah you probably are yeah (laughs) i mean that's kind of the truth that we need to hear because so many times we're just reactive it's like okay you have to hit rock bottom before you finally wake up and realize oh wait what there's life going on around me like what yeah and i i think that's such a great you know, thing to bring up is rock bottom, total burnout. Like my goal for all my clients is always like, let's, let's start to, first of all, create strategies in our lives that avoid burnout totally. Right. Um, but also to understand the signs within ourselves so that before we even get to a hundred, we can pull back, you know, um, because I think it's also important to remember, like, we are normally the primary caregivers, not just for our children, but for 
other people in our families. Yeah. And sometimes things happen, you know, like life happens to, you know, us and things are insane, you know, mm-hmm. and um, it's really about, okay, things are insane right now. Let me, you know, give myself permission to back up on these things maybe, or I pull out of this or I say no to this bake sale or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, it's like, it's really about starting to look at, okay, I'm one person, you know, yeah. like I, sometimes, you know, it's, isn't it funny how we like forget, like I'm one human being. <laughs> right. Um, and so we have to really just acknowledge that there can be seasons in our lives where things are really intensely insane and crazy and all the things. And um, it's really about the more we know ourselves, the more we know our bodies and we have habits already in place, the more we can pull back way before we get to burnout or even possible burnout. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great point that you made because yeah, how many times as moms do we feel the need to say yes? Like, oh, the school asks like, oh, they don't have a room, mom. Will you do it? And even though you're like, I I don't have the time for this. I don't have the capacity for this, but now I feel guilty. And we get mom guilted and mom shamed into doing these things. And it's like, it's okay to say no. Yes. And that brings us to boundaries, which like you really can't talk about burnout without boundaries. Right. Almost hand in hand. Yeah. Um, In many ways, if we're totally burnt out, I think there's usually almost always a boundary that's not being set, you know, and, and again, it brings so much guilt, but also it's about, I think the expectation of what we think before, you know, it's like, okay, like I can, I, I can only do so much. Right. So really setting those expectations for yourself on a more like normalized way. And I, I think that's why talking to other mothers is so important because it's like, should I expect myself to be able to do all this or not? <laughs> right. And no, if you yeah. truly find your people, they're going to tell you, uh, no, that's yeah, not, <laughs> not okay. If you're finding yourself surrounded by people that you're constantly having to try and like one up each other, no, that's yeah. not, not the right yes, group to be hanging totally. with. Totally. Yeah. Find your people and they're out there and they mm-hmm. will support you and champion you and pull you up from those hard times because being a mom is hard. Mm-hmm. Like we all became a mom for the first time at some point and it doesn't come with an instruction manual. So it's totally. in having that support from your friends, your family, just those around you, like, yes, accept the help. And yes. I think it's worth repeating too that, you know, boundaries aren't just necessarily boundaries with people. It's even boundaries with your time. It's mm-hmm. boundaries with your relationships. It's not just, all right, you know, I need to be better at saying no when they ask for something at school. Yes. Yes. And there's nothing wrong. You know, it's like, I think also that it's interesting to be like, oh, I'll feel guilty if I say no. Right. And then I'll also feel bad if I say yes. And it's like, well, but yeah, pick your poison though. Like, right. Exactly. You know I mean? Like, yes. But at the same time, like let, let yourself give yourself permission, surround yourself with people who will be like, you know, I can't tell you how many times I'm on a call with the mother and I'm just like, did you just hear all the things you said you have to right. do? <laughs> like, you should say it out loud to me. Do you understand a human cannot do all of that in right. like a week or whatever? Exactly. We set these false expectations <laughs> for ourselves. And it's like, yeah. no wonder we feel miserable. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, Morgan, this was such a fabulous conversation. You taught me so much. How can we learn more about you? So you can visit my website, Morgan Doman, that's D-O-M-A-N.com. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, um, everywhere. I'm pretty much Morgan Doman. And um, yeah, I will also include a freebie. I have a checklist um, that uh, you can look to see if you are burning out. It's like a avoid burnout checklist that I think may be really helpful for your listeners. So I'll oh send my gosh, that I as love well. it. Well, yeah. thank you so much for that. And be sure to download your copy. Just click the link in our bio. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 